Let's, let's turn our attention now to uh, the debate around the economy. And, um, wow, Wayne Swan, he had a red-hot crack, didn't he, Simon, at the RBA, went a lot further than his protégé when it comes to uh, the criticism of their handling of rates. Yeah, and Jim on the weekend actually made it pretty clear that he didn't, uh, didn't support Wayne's comments. Look, the reality here is that we're in a really interesting part of the economic cycle. I think the next movement of interest rates is down. It's just a question of how soon that's going to come. Families out there are desperate for some interest rate relief. But, the, you know, the causes of that inflation are stubborn and persistent and they come from a variety of causes, uh, not just domestic, but uh, most of them, in fact, international. So there are real challenges there. But, you know, the, the profile, if you like, that everyone agrees is that inflation is likely to come off the boil over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. It's really a question of how quickly does that happen and how quickly does that flow through to interest rate cuts? Yes, and the timing um, in, that, in answering that question, Peter McGoran, is going to be so pivotal to what happens next April or May when the government does go to the ballot box. Uh, exactly, Kieran. It will largely determine the outcome of the federal election. Uh, I think mm. everybody's agreed, economists and politicians and commentators, there'll be no interest rate cut this, the, for the remainder of this calendar year. But there is a prospect in the first part of next year. The big issue for the government is whether or not they'll get the credit for it. Taking on the RBA and abusing the RBA it was hubris on the part of the Treasurer and then it was complete folly and stupidity on the part of Wayne Swan. Won't, won't advance their cause. So even if interest rates come off, Kieran, in the lead up to the election, it's a question whether or not they come off much and whether it's too late politically for the government. Uh, Peter, I know you're watching closely the US election today. The New York Times Siena poll has things a, a toss of the coin. Um, we spoke about those pivotal moments in the Australian election. One looming in, in the United States this week, that being the presidential debate, Peter McGoran. Um, yeah, yes, Kieran, which um, you, nobody can afford to miss because it, it will influence the polls because the Americans basically, by a slight majority, I, I believe, want to vote for Trump. But can you take the risk and, and because of his character deficiency? So, to me, that's, that's what he's got to reassure Americans. Now, in the polls, I, I've wondered for a few weeks now, Kieran, why isn't Kamala Harris further ahead in the polls? By rights, she should be. Um, this is too close to call. Uh, all seven swing seats are within the margin for error, either for Harris or for Trump. So nobody can predict the outcome of this election. Bear in mind, though, that Trump is always slightly uh, underrepresented in the polls. So he might actually be uh, further ahead than you think at this stage, which to me is worrying for Harris. Simon, we will have that debate 11 o'clock right here on the, this program as it will be broadcast around the, the world. It's going to be, in, in, I think, compelling viewing on Wednesday. Oh, absolutely. And I think this is really what the Trump campaign have really wanted since Kamala became uh, the nominee for the Democrats. They've really struggled to actually kind of have a, have a wrestling match with her. She's been able to avoid those sort of contests and that type of scrutiny. Well... This is going to be two people in the same room having a go at each other. Yeah. It's exactly the type of format that Trump and his campaign would want. But there are also risks there too. I mean, there's no doubt that Biden very clearly gave a disastrous performance and it ended his candidacy. But I think we also need to bear in mind that Trump's performance was not a lot better. In fact, it was a pretty bad performance himself in the last presidential debate. It was just that Biden's was so much worse that it covered it up. So he needs a good performance too, but he's getting at least the contest that he's finally been looking for. Simon Banks, Peter McGoran, gentlemen, thanks. We'll talk to you soon.